I'm here with my wife Amy and my, my family. I have uh, three daughters, Ava, Ashley, and Lois, and our baby boy, uh, Jerry. And, uh, We're all hanging out over here. <laughs> <laughs> we lost our spot. <laughs> What I wanted to do, and I felt was very important, you know, is to get out throughout the state, talk to people, listen to what they have to say, listen to your concerns, and also listen to what the suggestions that you have. I think one of the problems people have had with their current leadership is they feel that they're not listening to their to the to their constituents. They feel the constituents, of the few people here, are not being heard by the elected leaders. And I wanted to come out here and hear what you had to say. I'm going to give you a little bit of background about myself, why I'm getting in office. Then I'd like to get out, answer any questions you have. We can talk about any specific issues. If you have something that you ask that I don't understand, I don't know the issue well enough, I will tell you that. I got to stand here today and say I don't know what that's out there. But the things that have been in the public eye, you know, I have, I have ideas and proposals for what I believe in, I'll share them with you. <coughs> yeah. Now again, I'll talk as loud as I can. I know it's a little bit loud. loud. Yeah, I grew up in I grew up in Nevada. Spent most of my life here. I I, I raised my children here. My my business has been here. I've, I've operated first as an attorney for seven years. I have two small businesses. I have a commercial real estate company and, uh, and also a nonprofit group, the Arcadia Basketball Academy. I've watched what's happened in our community, not only in Clark County, but what's happening throughout the rest of the state, the devastation, this economic toll has taken on all of us, and I understand the problems that we face. We all understand there's problems here. The difference between what I believe in and what's happening in the administration being pushed through by Senator Reed is a complete opposite. So you're not going to have any, there's not going to be too much we're going to agree upon. Senator Reed's philosophy is if there is a problem in our society, we need to get government to get involved, fix the problem, spend our money, and tell us the best way to get out of it. And I believe that if there's a problem in our society, us as individuals know what's best for us, and we should put the responsibility back to them and let us as individuals or us as small business people give us the tools to succeed and get government out of our lives and, and stop spending the money like we're spending here. First of all, we have a problem with our financial crisis. Uh, Harry Reid voted for and has promoted the uh, the first bailout package. He believes what he did was right. At least one of my opponents believes this was something that was necessary. Let me ask you, let's take away partisan. Let's, whether you're Republican, Democrat, Independent, what person doesn't have concerns when we have a federal government that takes taxpayer dollars and decides we're going to pick and choose which companies we want to survive and which companies we're going to allow to fail? Well, we believe Lehman Brothers not worth our time, so let them go. Uh, but we believe Merrill Lynch is worth it, so let's give the taxpayer dollars to them. What American citizen doesn't have a problem when our federal government picks and chooses which industries are going to survive or, or not going to survive? But we have a problem in the uh, auto industry, so let's bail them out. Well, they got a lot of union workers. They're probably going to vote for Obama and win this next election. So let's bail them out. But what's happened to the construction industry, the, the gaming industry, the small businesses around the country that are also having a hard time and struggling? We don't bail them out. I mean, once you start picking and choosing, what are the problems you have? You bail that down to insurance companies. You bail out auto companies. Where does it end? I was against the first two, the first bail out because I believe there was a band-aid on a much bigger problem that is now just festering and getting worse and worse. And that first bail out led to the second bail out, the third bail out, and the incredible unconsciousness spending that is now going on through our federal government. Do you realize today our government just passed an increase in our debt ceiling by another $1.9 trillion? We are now going to have a deficit in excess of $14 trillion. My understanding, our GDP for the whole year in our country is only $14 trillion. We have borrowed more money than we earned in gross in the whole country for a whole year. We've never had a debt like this. We are mortgaging the future of our children. We are destroying the retirement of our seniors. And we listen to the party in office right now saying we had to do this. Look how much. Obama in his State of the Union address yesterday said, the worst is behind us. 
Do you believe the worst is behind us? Oh. Worse yet, we haven't felt the implications of this deficit spending that's going to hit everybody. How do you think we're going to pay back $14 trillion? You can't hundred years worth of taxes. Well, we have, well, we've been born with China. Okay, this, this is what's going to, we got two choices. You can declare bankruptcy as a country and, and, and have no, no, uh, no credit worthiness throughout the whole world, or we're going to have to devalue our dollars to such an extent that the dollar is going to be worth 20, 30 cents of the dollar. What happens to all those senior citizens that have put away their, their life savings on a pension plan to get them a fixed income based upon the value of the dollar now and because of the reckless and immoral spending by the current administration, that dollar is not going to be worth 20 cents of the dollar. What are those people going to live on? What are, what are you guys going to live on? You know, all we heard last night was, well, we were in a horrible problem because of the Bush administration, because of the Bush administration, because of the public. Look what we did wrong. Well. The way I look at it, we mortgage our future, and we're worse off now than one year ago. His solution, Green's solution, that we call a more government intervention in our lives, more government spending. My solution is let's go back to the private sector that's made this country the greatest economic success group in the history of mankind. Unleash the creativity and the entrepreneurial spirit of the American people by getting government off our backs, out of our wallets, and let us succeed. How do you do that? We are going through tough times right now. Small businesses all over the place. Less, less of their burden, their tax burden they have right now so they can get through these tough times. Less, less of these burdens and regulations that are out there right now that they can get the our companies can't compete internationally. Earlier today, my family was in minerals, uh, was in the hot water, and we were at the gas station. I talked to a gentleman who came out. He said, hey, you're running for Senate. Let me tell you this problem I've had. I got a mine I want to I want to start mining. Uh, the half the ore is on the surface, and I got customers that are mining. I applied for a permit, and the BLM told me it's going to, because of the backlog and application, they have to wait at least a year before they can get to it. It'll be seven years before they can start the full time to mine. I said, how many jobs would you be able to, to hire if, if, if you had these permits? He said, 300. 300 jobs ready to get started, but they can't because of these burdensome, ridiculous regulations that we have that is handcuffing our small businesses. My solution to these problems is, is, is untie the hand of, the, of, of our entrepreneurial spirit. Now, we'll turn this economy around. We'll come back stronger and we're going to do it without having to spend the government money. Now, I'd like to take any questions that you guys have here. Yes, sir.
We have paid more money with the 15% capital gains tax than we have with the 25% capital gains tax because it's spurred economic activity. That's what I control. I don't, once you start taxing people more, people are going to lay more workers off. Workers aren't going to have money to spend on products and all stuff else. Yes. One of the real problems here in the state of Nevada is we are only 17% state. Yes. We are 83% in territory. That Congress refuses to recognize our sovereignty, and they allow BLM and the Forest Service to make law in direct violation of the first line of the Constitution. Congress did not delegate its authority to make law. What do you intend to do about that? Well, first of all, part of my economic plan we're going to talk about is to work through the BLM and get the ban and these past the states. You're going to have to, obviously other states are going to have to petition the United States office to happen. I'm going to work with them, with the federal government, and get the BLM to release that plan that we can use, that we should be using to better our position economically in the state and as a use of the state, uh, which is um, one of the issues that we're going to bring it up in every location. Now, the BLM is restricting more and more use of these public lands. I will be a strong proponent of that, and I will defend that and fight for that. Gotta have some more questions. Yeah. You heard it, but, 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 and I will go back and fight for the limited government that the federal government was intended for the Constitution. Abortion, 50 billion years. I am, am pro-life. I was raised as a Catholic. I believe life is, uh, starts at conception. And I believe uh, I am a life. I like to ball the IRS. That's my first thing. I, I, I would like to, and I'm a proponent of the, uh, the fair tax, uh, where it was, it was uh, uh, I don't know the name of the organization first encountered, but they got a lot of no right in the last election. And the governor discussed it where there would be a national sales tax to wipe out the IRS. I believe there's a lot of merit to that. There's some things the product can refine to handle some of the objections that the other side has. But if we can do something to eliminate not only just the IRS as, a, as, a, as an organization, but all of the workers and regulations, and that's the only understand how they have. And more importantly, the people with the money are getting, with their lobbyist efforts, are getting the tax exemption where they don't have to pay taxes while the rest of us do. Yes, sir. <coughs>
some people in, in this race feel we should bring more pork back to the state without getting our fair share. That's wrong. We need to eliminate all pork. It's not part of the Constitution. There's no basis where it says, I mean, let me give you an example. How can you pretty feel it's fair that 49 other states should pay for the citizens of Wyoming's Medicare for the rest of our, our existence? Where are the federal constitutions? Where, in, in, in just total equity, is that right? And the sad thing about it is, you know, so what if you're in Wyoming, um, Nebraska right now, and you get this, and you say, wow, this is great. I don't have to pay for it. You know what's going to happen with all of Nebraska? There's going to be a senator in another state that's going to make you pay for their stuff. It all snowballs. It gets worse and worse than everybody in this state. Eliminate all of it and go back to, go back to what the state, let the states pick and choose what they want. Yes, sir. talk about the medical bill for a second if you don't mind because I know that's a very big issue with everything out there. What we have is we have a we have a, a health care bill that the Senator Reed tells us is a great bill. When you understand it better, you're gonna be more in favor of it. Just wait till you understand it better. So what does he do? He negotiates it behind closed doors, refuse to put on C-SPAN. But why does he let us understand it better? He votes on it on Christmas Eve without people have a chance to read it and understand what it is and have an open discourse on it. And then, if it was such a great bill, why does he have to bribe one senator after another senator to vote on it just to get the votes to pass into such a great bill? Senator Reed's solution to this bill is more government involvement in our health care decisions, more government spending, and that's going to solve our health care problem. We're going to have a bill that's going to be upwards of $2.4 trillion over 10 years. You're going to have a bill that's going to cut Medicare by $500 billion, raise taxes on 400 billion people. We're going to have upwards of 70 to 72 new government agencies and by reports telling us what we should and shouldn't go to health care. Sounds like a hell of a bill to me, huh? And I'll tell you, and you know what? How can anybody think this is a fair bill, bill when they tax you when you don't have health insurance, then they're going to tax you when you get too good at health insurance? They just want tax it. But you know what? You can get excluded from being taxed for, for too good health insurance if you're a union worker or if you're a federal employee. Does that sound like a bargain? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, my, my, my solution that I came out with early on is if we could handle two points, two areas that we need to work on the most, reduce our health care costs, and help it, uh, prevent a lot of these uh, denials of uh, pre existing conditions. With respect to the cost, we can reduce the health care costs substantially without the cost of the taxpayers one additional dollar by doing four simple things. The about, I'm going to, it's going to talk for a minute, okay, then I'll take the next one. You allow people to purchase insurance across state lines, which will allow more competition in the insurance industry. Right now, 70% of all the insurance in Nevada is given by one company. Create more competition, we'll get a better product, product at a lower cost. The second area is the ones talking about tort reform. If we cap non-economic damages, doctors will stop providing this preventive medicine that they're providing to prevent themselves from being sued. Do you realize that it's estimated doctors are spending between 180 and 210 billion dollars a year on preventive medicine? Let's eliminate that cost and we'll have to our health insurance. Third thing is we need to enforce the federal law where Medicare is paid the last resort. That's a federal law. However, 13% of, of all Medicare recipients have private insurance, and our federal government doesn't go after them and make them pay it. They just pay the bills themselves. We do a better job of going after the private insurance companies to can drop those costs. Fourth area deals with what they call state mandates. A state mandate is where the state tells you, as a citizen of your, this state, you have to buy this coverage in the policy at this cost, and you don't have a choice. That's completely contrary to everything our country built built upon. But we have the right, we go out, we work hard, we have our hard-earned dollars, and then we pick and choose what we want to spend our money for based upon the benefit we choose in the cost. What do you think state mandates run in your insurance premium? What percentage do you think they run? The flow the way. 20 to 50 percent of all insurance premiums are state mandates. Nevada has 56 state mandates, one of the highest in the country. We're paying up to 50% of our insurance premiums on state mandates. If we do those four things, we substantially reduce our health care costs. It doesn't cost us a dollar. It doesn't create a reduction in the kind of It doesn't take $500 billion out of Medicare. It's already going bankrupt. It doesn't raise taxes like it's already 
$400 billion. It doesn't tax people because they want to have a good health insurance plan. It solves a lot of these problems. Why would anybody want to expand the government-run health care program? Right now, Medicare, Medicaid, and SGIP, the and the PHA, they, they are spending, 2007, they estimated the cost of the, of the federal health program at $1.1 trillion. And out of that, it's been estimated that 10% is fraud, waste, and abuse. So those federal uh, health care programs are wasted for fraud or abuse of $110 billion a year. Why do we want to increase that? Now, with respect to the uh, uh, pre-existing conditions, a lot of the times the way that happens is somebody has insurance, they lose their, their job, they lose their, that insurance, they try to go out and buy the private insurance, they can't get insured. Why don't we get away from the employer-based insurance plan to a portable, individually-owned plan? It's very simple. You allow the employers who want to provide health insurance for their employees, have them put the money into a health savings account, each individual employee can go their own land, pick and choose what he or her want in their insurance policy, and they would keep that even if they lost their job or they voluntary transfer the jobs. And they would do it. Well, how about that? Why don't, why don't work individuals buy their own health insurance? Because as an individual, even if you're self-employed, you buy your own health insurance, you don't get a tax deduction for it. But if you're an employer, you buy your own you get a tax deduction for it. Let's level the playing field all people, that individuals get the same tax deduction as, as employers, and, and this incurs more money, because employers put more money in health savings accounts, create these portable health uh, plans, and, like, and these people won't have a problem with creating That's my proposal. I came out with this in August, and um, I, haven't, I haven't been within a group of anybody that's disagreed with those. But actually, the first one that we had, this is a true story. <coughs> my wife, she, she laughs at all the time. The first week I got in the race, it was in early August, and uh, Reed had refused to come out and meet with the people face to face and discuss his health care plan. There were, you know, he called all those people evil monitors that he didn't want to meet. So I said, I'm going to hold my own plan. I just got in the race a week into it. So I got an email blast that was sent to me that here in Reed's office sent to all the supporters. He said, go to Danny Tarkini's town hall in health care and ask him the tough questions and, and uh, see how he can want that he can't answer. So we had probably 20 or 30 years ago, 300 people there we got these old people and they tried to get from me on And I did a few other issues, that's what I said. So one guy gets up there and we got a stick rod and said, you know Mr. Tarkin, I just don't agree with all four of these proposals. I said, I said which one don't you agree with? Well, you know, the first one, but that's okay. Uh, it went on for about a minute and a half, it was clear on, oh, pretty soon people were laughing at him, and he finally sat down, he couldn't give one answer what he can agree with. These are common sense so proposals that follow the basic concepts of what they are claiming to be We should be okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was going to the federal government is a violation of the Bill of Rights of the 9th Amendment. He's a declaration of the powers in this Constitution that are not to be construed to deny or discourage others in the name of the Bible.
things that we need to make ourselves the same to the UN. We should not do that on the UN. That issue that will come up on a lot of uh, these meeting groups too. Do you comment on border security? Uh, immigration, just border security. Well, I mean, border security. So, you know, to me, we, we can sit here and, and the stuff that the public can find on immigration, illegal immigration is. Let's build a fence, let's stop everybody from coming over and that's all the problems. The way to solve the problems is to take away the incentives of white people coming to our country illegally. There is no laws that say that people who come into our country illegally have a right to free health care, taxpayer health care, taxpayer health care. There is no law in our country that provides for somebody who comes to our country illegally to have taxpayer education. And, and these employers that are hiring people that are here illegally, they have to hold them accountable for that. There's a reason they're doing that because they hire them at a lesser wage, hold them accountable. You take away the incentive of what, why are these happening, and you're going to solve this problem a lot better than trying to build a fence or trying to send out the militia to chase down 20 million people. Yes. Um, would you be willing to support legislation that basically establishes uh, Open door policy for the, at, at the federal level. We have lots of uh, city councils and so forth. Open door policies. There's city legislatures, legislators. Together, we're forms of city council. Actually, they're very distinct. I'm trying to think there's an open meeting law. Yeah, I mean, again, we had a president that came into office and said, we're going to have the most transparency we've ever had. We have Reed say we're going, to, we're going to have the most transparency of, of any of any uh, administration and of being in the Senate. And all they do is they run behind closed doors and, and, and pass these bills. Yes, I would be in favor of having these hearings held open to the public whenever they had a certain forum of people discussing these issues, like they do with the states. You know, one of the problems we're having with jobs is, uh, especially anything that's industrial, the EPA, the uh, environmental issues, yep. and, and I do believe we need to be good stewards of our environment. However, lately the, uh, the, the head of the EPA basically stated that she already had all the power she needed to enact laws and to start enforcing laws at this point, and it was basically backed up by Democratic senators. Oh, yeah. Saying that we've already delegated that, we elected them, uh, the congressmen that appointed her, and so she can enact law. We already have problems with carbon tax. Some of these issues are going to strangle businesses in the matter. Yeah. Well, that's what you're talking about is 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 the EPA's way to get around the cap and trade bill that they can't get past the legislature. The cap and trade would destroy our economy. They would absolutely destroy our economy, and they know they don't have a vote for it, nor do they want to pay the Democratic control of Congress. Wants to put the elected leaders to vote on it because they know the public's against it. So they're trying to circumvent it through these EPA um, regulations that they're setting. And I'm certainly going to fight against that. I, I, I do everything in my power to fight cap and trade. I think we need to destroy it. the economy of our country. I, I just want to say a couple things. I got some more questions while I'm saying this and we can get into it. There is a movement around the country that is fed up with the direction that our uh, current administration has taken, led by Harry Reid. And there, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a passive, passionate, powerful movement. You know, it's been ridiculed by certain people in the media, and not just the Tea Party people, but anybody in the South and is upset and protest <coughs> what's going on. But I see it everywhere I go. I mean, I, I've been here um, uh, and spoken many times. I was here with John Ensign four, year, four years ago when he ran, and we had 12 people at his event when he came to it. I had told the lady I'm with, uh, I, uh, Laura, I said, I'm surprised we have 10 people here on the late uh, on the week night. But every place we go, we have great crowds because of the passion that people have about what's happening in our country. And there is a movement, and, 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 and the elected officials are in office now are going to be held accountable for the direction they've taken us and for the, the risky irresponsible policy that they have pushed through. And I am glad, that's one reason why I got into this race. It had to, it had to change. And let me get let me get taken back a step of why I got into this race. I really, really disagree with every single policy that Harry Green is pushing through Congress. 
I won a court case in uh, uh, July, the end of July, that uh, was basically when I ran for office previously, I took two races that I had no business for, and I was really coming in early voting, and my opponents attacked me with some defamatory uh, attacks, not the political political skill, but completely defamatory stuff. I took it to court, and for the first time, from what I've been told in Nevada State history, I won a defamation lawsuit as a public official. I won that in July. And I said at that time, you know, and I, and I learned that Harry Luther Green was behind a lot of it. In fact, his son was the lead witness in that case. And I said, somebody had to run against Harry Reid, who would go back to Washington, D.C., and be a representative of the people, and, do, and basically be a public servant, serve the public's interest, as opposed to being a partisan politician, which Reid is. So I got in the race in August, and if you remember back in August, nobody knew how Harry Reid was um, being viewed at the time. Polls hadn't come out. I had no idea where I would be with the polls. It was a complete crapshoot. I just knew somebody had to run against him, I, and I wasn't scared to run against him. He took his best shot at me with the stuff they used that I wanted to defend the story case. Ten days into the race, they do the first poll, and I beat, I beat him by 11 percent. 11 percent. Just blew me away. And then there's been 11 polls since, and the best thing about it is I've gotten up to the polls all the way through. For the last two polls that happened, he had 12 to 14 percent. Even though Reed is running hundreds of thousands of dollars in TV time, trying to everybody have Reed. And the reason I say that to you is this. Reed's going to be held accountable. You be someone's going to go back to life. First of all, to beat Reed. And to beat Reed, you better get someone who's going to stand up to him, somebody who's going to call him out on his policies, and someone who's not scared to take his attacks. And I've exhibited this, and I will do that. Furthermore, you need to pick the right person who's going to go back to Washington, D.C., and represent the views that you have here. And that's why I'm traveling around the state. I want to listen to what you have to say, understand your concerns, and at the same time, have, let you understand my political views. And, and, and what I hope to do when, when I'm elected as a senator. <coughs> There's going to be a difference in this primary between myself and my opponents, and we're going to make a clear distinction between what I hope to do and what my opponents hope to do. There won't be any personal tax, but there will be, a, you will see the distinction between us. I believe I am on the right side of the issues of the, 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 this movement to get back to the Constitution, to limited government, lower taxes, <coughs> honest regulation, and meaningful accountability and I will do that when I get to office. It's going to be a tough primary. It's going to be a very close race. And I hope that if you do support me, you will get out and you vote. You'll talk to people, get them out to vote. I need to win this on a grassroots basis. I will be outspent. My opponent will have more money. She'll run more too many times. But I really believe I got the people behind me. When I talk to people, we discuss the issues. They, I, 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 I can see. That, that what I'm talking about is resonating. And if it is with you, I certainly hope that you'll help me here. Is there some more questions? I just wanted to bang, bang, bang. go ahead. Did you discuss your plan for Yucca Mountain? No, I didn't, but thank you for bringing that one up because that's a, a big issue for a lot of people here. You know, Harry Reid, um, on his initial TV uh, ads, have, has boasted that one of the great things in the state of Nevada is to spend 20, 30, whatever billion dollars of our federal taxpayer dollars on Yucca Mountain all of a sudden close it down and say we don't want to do it anymore. You know, I believe we should turn Yucca Mountain into a new building processing facility. Like, like they do. Like they do in France and other countries, where they reprocess 95% of the nuclear spent fuel. It'll create thousands of jobs for the state, hundreds of millions of dollars in much needed state revenue and we'll turn UNLV and UNR into the leading research institutions in the whole world. I believe the people of Clark County will buy into this. At one time, they were scared. There's enough research, and enough tests, and enough safety precautions to prevent um, these type of catastrophes that we're going to try to, to um, scare everybody with. It's a common sense thing that will help our state dramatically. It needs to be done. Let me tell you, I, I, I took this position. I haven't done any polls on it. I have no idea how it's going to resonate <coughs> statewide. But I understand it's the right thing to do. And, and I've been behind it from day one, the first day I got in the race. Term limits? No. I get, I guess, at every single place I go, that's another big question. And I'm going to tell you my term limits. If the public wants term limits, if, if my constituents, because again, I'm a public servant, I am, I am served your interest. Want term limits? I would be in favor of term limits. I would go back to Washington and see what like that. There, there's advantages for term limits and there's disadvantages, and you got to make those decisions with an open mind. 
We're not talking about a state office. We're talking about a federal office. We have people in, in, in the federal offices who are making national security decisions, uh, decisions with the uh, with wars that, that, quite honestly, having a board experience in them there is a benefit to us. Now, where I see the other argument, when you get long-term entrenched politicians in office, such as Harry Reid, who loses touch with the interests of the people, but it's hard to get him out because he has so much power and can raise so much money. So there, there, there's a pros and cons right now that set up an ice cream for them, and if that's the case, and all of them go back to the court Yes, sir. You realize, as a senator, you are representing the state as a whole rather than Las Vegas, <laughs> where the <laughs> I will represent the full state of Nevada with all their interests, and, and I will represent our country with all their interests. Going back, when you swear, on, when you swear uh, to, uh, when you take your, your role when you're sworn in as a senator, you were to do what's the best interests of our nation. And, and yet, and it's not the city of Las Vegas or even just the state of Nevada, it's for our country. And I will, I will do what's best for our country, and I will represent the people of Nevada and be a public citizen. Yes, ma'am. You are an extension of the state legislature in the Senate. Yeah. Yeah, I know yeah, I, I know that's important. That's that's it. I understand it reads in favor of taking the farmers' water and replenishing Walker Lake so that Walker Lake's filled up but you don't have any farm anymore. And, and, and I certainly do not take that approach. Yes, you know, you're 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 that? Well, I just know the call of the email that I've seen and the little bit that I've read from the news. I sort of, let me just tell you, quite honestly, there's been a lot of issues out there that are important to people. I have an understanding of, of, of some uh, quite well, and I have a small understanding of others. And there are some issues I don't have an understanding of. If I don't, I just don't understand. And what I've heard, I, I'm a proponent of helping small businesses and see and not tying their hands. And what I understand with this issue is it's difficult and not impossible for the office here and um, Churchill County is a lot. I was told 
it, just to get the permit alone to start the power plant in the United States would take 10 years. China will build 76 of them over the next 10 years. We do, what we, have, do what we can with, with the resources we have now to provide low cost energy and at the same time invest in these alternative sources of energy that will wean us off of the foreign oil and will also help protect the environment. We're not there yet, it's still so costly that it's gonna, it's gonna run our, business, our company out of business. Yes. 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 They did.